Hello and welcome back to Palm Tree News. My name is Andrew. I'm joined by Chris, and we'll be covering news we found interesting today. The Sonic the Hedgehog movie has been delayed until next year. When the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog was released, backlash and criticism from fans and the general public was harsh to say the least. One of the most glaring problems was Sonic's design, which hardly resembled anything fans were used to from any of the games. Instead, fans were given a weird, strangely terrifying and vaguely blue humanoid figure with creepy human teeth and toned runner's legs. The director eventually responded on Twitter, stating that they were going to rework Sonic's design and re-render the movie with the new design in time for the movie's original November 7th release date. However, the director recently announced that the movie would need more time and would instead be released on February 14th of 2020. It seemed like it was going to take an insurmountable amount of work to try to rework Sonic's design and render the entire movie with the new CGI design in time to hit the original release date, and fans were beginning to voice concern about the amount of work potentially being put on VFX artists to hit that deadline. The director appears to have heard those concerns as well, as their delay announcement also contained the hashtag no VFX artist were harmed in the making of this movie. I think everyone is looking at Sonic the Hedgehog with a sense of morbid curiosity more than anything else at this point, but a new Sonic design could help make the movie at least mildly entertaining. With the movie being pushed back to next year, hopefully this gives the design team the time they need to at least make Sonic look right. Square held its 51st letter from the producer live for its upcoming Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers expansion. The show lasted quite a long time, with the first hour being consumed by the producer Yoshi P and his crew attempting to fix audio issues at their location. The group apologized profusely at the end of the video, but they honestly didn't have to. The sheer amount of content shared was more than enough to have all their issues forgiven. Without touching on every single reveal, here's a few of the key major changes coming to Final Fantasy XIV in just over a month. The World Trinity will be adjusted to make tanks more fun to play, DPS have less to manage as they dish out damage, and healers remain largely the same. Veteran tanks should rejoice as the stance dilemma is coming to an end. In Final Fantasy XIV, tanks use a tank stance that increases defense or health, lowers damage, and increases how well they hold enemy attention. Tanks also have an attack stance that conversely boosts their damage and negates their defense or health bonuses. Because there are benefits to swapping in battle to optimize their efficiency, tanks often swap stances or stance danced, which sometimes caused issues for other members of the party as they fought. This is being completely reworked in 5.0. Instead, tanks will receive a trait that gives them a nice defense and health boost natively, and the stance left over will only affect if their attacks keep the attention of the monster better. This is a major game changer for all past and future content. Moving away from the Trinity, Square showed off a 15 minute long video of new playable class abilities and how their current abilities have been reworked for the expansion. Machinus was a standout for the show as it can now summon a Terminator style robot to well on its opponents which is damn cool. As a closing surprise, producer Yoshi P showed off a left-handed keypad designed by Hori. This keypad is intended to be ergonomic and assist left-handed players like himself play even better. The stick looks pretty cool and it was surprising to see hardware pop up during the MMO's discussion. Square recently announced that Final Fantasy XIV plays a major part in their profits, so it's probably here to stay for another few expansions. Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers officially launches on July 2nd, 2019, with early access starting June 28th. Well, that's all the news we found interesting today. This is also the last Bomb Tree Gaming news we will release in its current state. Next week, we'll be changing the format of the show, hopefully for the last time, to Bomb Tree Gaming Industry News. The major changes you can expect will be only one release per week, a longer show runtime, and news that is more focused on stories that have significant impact to the industry. What these changes will allow us to do is give more time per episode to research and write, provide even better editing for each segment, and additional time to focus on producing new and returning content for the channel. Rest assured, we'll still aim to keep the news as informative, objective, and succinct as it is now. Thank you to everyone who's watched the news up until this point, it's only going to get better. A big thank you to Gabriel Skaggs, Michael Slater, and all awesome patrons for your support.